All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about Newton's second law and how we can use it to calculate information about motion involving forces and acceleration. So what Newton's second law states is that the acceleration of an object depends on the force that we apply to it, as well as the mass of an object. So basically, if we look at the formula here, the, the classic Newton's second law formula is F equals MA, and if you go on further in physics, you'll always use F equals MA and, and a ton of different applications. But if we look at this formula, we can, we can kind of translate this, this Newton's second law from words into this formula. So the force that we apply to an object is going to give it an acceleration. So if we increase the amount of force here, the amount of acceleration is going to increase as well. So we can think about a couple of other terms here and how they would affect this formula. So if we have a given force, let's say we have 100 Newton force, and we wanna see how would that affect two different objects with different masses. So let's say we have a really light object that maybe has a mass of one kilogram. We wanna see what would, what would the acceleration be for a one kilogram object when we apply a 100 Newton force to it. So we could do the math here, right? We could get the acceleration by itself by getting rid of this one kilogram. Really anything times one is itself. So we could say uh, 100 here would be our acceleration. So what if we compared that to, let's say, a second object that has the same 100 Newton force acting on it. So we have two objects with the same force acting on them. And let's say the second object has a mass of maybe five kilograms. We want to see what acceleration would this second larger object have due to the same force. All right, so if we do the math here, we want to get the acceleration by itself. In order to do that, we have to get rid of this five kilograms here. So to cancel out this five, we want to do the opposite of what it's doing. So we would have to divide. This five is being multiplied here, so the opposite would be division. So we can cancel these out here. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do the other side of the equation. So we have to divide both sides here by five. So these two fives will cancel out and leave us with one. And this we could evaluate as 20 for our final answer for the acceleration. So our units here for acceleration, if you remember from when we talked about motion, would be meters per second squared. Okay, so if we look at this, we have the heavier object, but both of these objects have the same force, right? We had a hundred Newton force acting on both of these two objects. You say, right, we have this big five kilogram object and this smaller one kilogram object. Okay, so what happens is if we have the same force acting on these two objects, the heavier object is not going to accelerate as quickly, right? We have 20 meters per second for our acceleration here and 100 meters per second for our acceleration here. These are obviously pretty unrealistic numbers, but if we had a lighter object with the same force acting on it, that force will basically do, it will, it will be more effective in terms of accelerating this object. If you think about if you were to push a really light object across the floor and put the same push into a really heavy object, the lighter object would obviously be easier to, to get moving. It would, it would accelerate faster based on that given force that you put into it. So the heavier an object is, the higher its mass, the more resistant it's going to be to acceleration. And that's the concept of inertia, which we'll talk about in a separate video. All right. So we see, we've seen so far that, that the heavier an object is, the more mass it has, basically the harder it is to accelerate, right? right? We put the same force into these two and this five kilogram object did not accelerate as much. So if we wanted to get the same acceleration out of this five kilogram object, we'd have to put a lot more force into it. All right, so this is just a, a brief introduction into how Newton's second law works. Okay, so in terms of working out Newton's second law problems, we can use the, the formula F equals MA to calculate some information depending on what we're given. So if we look at this first example here, and maybe if, I mean, if you think you're great with the F equals MA formula right now, and you're looking at this and you say, wow, that's really easy. I could do this like easy as cake. 
then maybe pause the video right now and try these examples out on your own. I'm gonna work them out uh, individually here. So if we look at this first example, we have a force of 40 newtons acting on an object that with a mass of 10 kilograms and we wanna find its acceleration. So when we go to solve these problems, the easiest way to do it is to list out all of the information that you have in terms of what variable it would mean. So the formula we're using is F equals MA. So we know we're involving force, mass, and acceleration. So I want to list out the information in the problem in terms of the variables that we have. So the force we have is 40 newtons. We could list this in terms of our variables here. We'd have the force is 40 newtons. We also have an object with a mass of 10 kilograms. So we can list that as mass of 10 kilograms. And then we're looking for the acceleration. What is the acceleration? That's what we're being asked for in this question. So we can leave acceleration as an unknown. That's gonna be our variable in this equation. So when we go to solve the equation now, F equals MA, we wanna write our formula out. So we already have all the information. Now that we've made this nice, neat little list here, we can just plug all of it straight into the equation, but we have to make sure we plug everything in into the proper spot. So the force is going to go into the force spot, the mass is gonna go into the mass spot, and the acceleration is gonna be our unknown. So we cannot go plugging our 10 kilograms in as a force because it's, it's just our mass. It needs to go in the mass variable spot. Okay, so when we plug numbers in here, we can put 40 for our force, equals 10 for our mass times acceleration. So to solve this, again, we wanna get the acceleration by itself. Whenever you're solving for a variable, you wanna isolate it or get it by itself. So we're gonna get rid of this 10. And again, we'll do the opposite of what it's doing. It's being multiplied right now by A. So we'll do division here. The 10 will cancel out with the 10. We have to do the same division to both sides. Anytime you change one side of the equation, you have to change the other side the same way. So we could divide these out and our final acceleration here would be four meters per second squared. All right, so to solve these equations, the steps you wanna take are first, identify what pieces of information you're given in the problem and what piece of information you're looking for. And we can list it out like this in a list over here and make it real easy for ourselves when we go to plug into the equation. So once you list out all of your information in terms of the variables and the F equals MA formula, so that'd be F, M, and A, we wanna just plug them into the formula here in the proper spots and then solve mathematically from there. Okay, so if we look at this second equation here, or the, the second problem here, we have what force is required. So we're being asked for the force, we can say force is going to be our unknown, to cause an acceleration of five meters per second. So our acceleration would be five meters per second squared on an object with a mass of seven kilograms. So we know now our mass is seven kilograms. So when we go to plug in here, we know we're using the same equation, F equals MA. It's always good to start by writing out your formula. We can plug everything into the appropriate spot. So forces are unknown. We're gonna leave whatever our unknown is as a variable. And mass we know is seven, and our acceleration we know is five. So to solve this here, we already have the variable isolated because F is already by itself. So we can just do the math here. We could multiply these together and we get a force of 35 newtons here. All right, so I'm gonna erase this real quick so we can have some space for the bottom question here. So for our last question, we have what is the mass of an object? So mass is our unknown. Please, I know I'm doing this up here, but do not look at this question. We are working on the bottom one. So mass is our unknown here. We have an acceleration of six meters per second per second. So that would be A is six meters per second squared. And we have a force of 18 newtons. So force is 18 newtons. So again, we're gonna plug into F equals MA here. This time we have a force of 18. We have a mass unknown, so we're gonna leave it as a variable. And we have an acceleration of six meters per second squared. So to solve this, we're looking for the mass. We wanna get that variable isolated or by itself. So we have to get rid of this six. In order to get rid of the six, we're gonna do the opposite of what it's doing. It's being multiplied, so we'll divide. Again, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. 
So we can cancel out the sixes here. They'll leave us with one. Anything times one is itself, so we can all just drop these out. Then we have 18 divided by six, so we'd end up with three kilograms for our mass here. All right, so if you need to go back and work some of these examples on your own, maybe try them out, pause the video, and then check your answers, that would be great. Otherwise, to summarize, what we want to do to solve F equals MA problems is to first identify all of the information that we're given and looking for in the question. And we can list it out like this in a nice neat list in terms of the variables. So if we do this, it becomes very easy when we go to plug in and do the math because we have all the information listed for us right here. We can just plug it into the proper spots and be done with it. All right? So you plug in your information and then just solve mathematically. So you want to basically whatever variable you're looking for, get by itself. And in order to do that, you have to see what other pieces do I need to maybe get rid of on one side of the equation, or maybe the variable is already by itself, and then you just can do some math and that'll be it. All right? So try some of these F equals MA examples out on your own, and thanks for watching the video.